Hello, welcome back. Today I have brought a special guest. Please meet Twinkle. Okay, hold on. I will explain what's happening here. This is Twinkle. She is a survivor, basically. I have had her for about two years now. She's still going strong. And the reason why I've brought her here today, her, I'm referring to it as her, is to say that I have always known, just through trial and error, this is a great expression, meaning that I have tried and I have failed. So through trial and error, I've always known through trial and error, that I was never very good at caring for plants. It's just, I don't have it in me. I, I just don't, right? So I'm sure you guys relate to this. I'm sure you do. There are so many of you. I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure, right? Am I right? That so many of you are not good at caring for plants. And I've always really, truly, deeply believed that that was the case with me. Until about four years ago, I got another one of those. I forgot what they're called. The, Obviously, they have a name. I forgot what that type of plant is called. Um, I got one about four years ago, and she survived. I'm calling it she again. Yeah. Oh, but you're not supposed to call plants she. Exactly with a problem that comes from learning English from books and grammar rules. Yes, you're right. You're we supposed to use it for objects and plants and, and animals. But uh, when you feel some sort of uh, personal, emotional attachment to it, it is absolutely okay to personify this, to call it he and she. Anyway, I had that one for two years and she did really, really well too. And she died when we went to London in 2022 and we stayed in London for three weeks. And I think what happened was that I watered her I watered her. So you actually use water as a verb in this sentence. I watered her a little bit too much before we left for London. Um, not that she was immersed in water. No, not at all. But um, she usually stays, used to stay, this one's the same, by my window in my kitchen. So they get plenty of daylight. However, since we were traveling, I had lowered my blinds in the kitchen, lowered. So the blinds were up and I had put them down, had lowered the blinds so there was no sunlight or daylight, in fact, coming in. So it became, when we came back home, I noticed that it had become uh, moldy. So there was like mold in, in the plant. And then I tried to, you know, revive her. <laughs> for a couple of weeks and it didn't work so she had to go unfortunately i'm sorry if i'm talking about this too coldly i'm not one who's very very attached to plants you know this yeah anyway so i got twinkle to replace flora so flora unfortunately died and twinkle came in its place and yes so twinkle sits in the exact same spot as flora just by my window in the kitchen. And she's thriving. She's thriving. She's doing really well. Uh, sometimes I forget to water her for like 10 days, but she's still, I mean, she's hanging in there really. Um, I've noticed that when I water her once a week, very regularly, every Monday, that her, the leaves get uh, brighter and almost thicker. And, you know, the color is more vibrant. And so I'm learning to observe Twinkle and to learn about what she needs from me. Now, the whole point of this video is to say that a lot of the time we have this uh, limiting belief that we're not good at some things. So the other day I was talking to a student of mine and we were saying that we were both really bad with numbers as a kid. So I never did well at maths or anything like that. And I've come to the conclusion as an adult that it's not that I am bad with numbers, that I'm really, that I suck at maths. That's, that's not really truly the case. It's just that I never had someone 
show maths to me in a way that I understood it. And this is the difference between, it's a very deep video today, this is the difference between us as children. We, unfortunately, we rely on some sort of adult to show things to us and to teach us things in, in ways that we, we can fully grasp what they're saying, grasp, understand, you know, take what, what they're saying. But as adults, we are so lucky, think about it, that we can find ways around things. We can find our own ways to learn things that we have always thought we were not good at by nature. And yes, some of us are better than others at certain things just by nature. It's who we are. But it doesn't mean that we cannot learn things and we cannot learn to be better. So no, I don't think I'm ever going to be one of those people with a house full of plants of different kinds and they're all thriving and I know exactly what to do with each one of them. I don't. But one thing I have learned in the past four years with both Flora and Twinkle is that I am in fact able to keep them going, you know, to give them what they need, even if it's just for a couple of years and then they're ready to go. I mean, Twinkle is really hanging in there, let's face it. Um, so this is to say that as adults, we have this power. We are lucky enough to take control and to learn things that we have always believed we were not good at. So. All of the things that happened when you were little as a kid that have made you believe you were not good at certain things, that's okay, it happens to all of us. Maybe it's time to leave that behind and to really make your own life and live what you would like to experience really as a, as a human being and to learn those things that you have always struggled with that you would like to learn to do and to learn to, to understand maybe and to face those challenges. Okay, I wanted to bring you a different perspective today and a really deep and important listening practice. I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments. See you guys soon. Take care.